Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at, as requested, the maximum ferry range or the maximum theoretical ferry range of the A10C in DCS World as compared to the other aircraft. Now, as usual, caveat, what we're not find, we're not actually finding the theoretical uh, pure maximum of this aircraft. Now, I've spoken to real pilots about this theory now, and the I mean to get at the absolute maximum out range out of an aircraft, what you have to do is you have to vary the aircraft's speed and altitude depending on the current amount of fuel remaining so they don't just fly up to a certain level fly along at that certain level and then go land throughout the two three four thousand miles they're constantly changing their speed and altitude depending on their current weights their fuel load to optimize their drag their alpha and whatnot now we can't do that because that's just impossible too complicated so we're doing a gross oversimplification but the actual figures we found out work out relatively accurate in the end so you can see what we've done so far the only two that i consider uh, not good are the AV8B and the Vigan. They're way below what they should be uh, according to real life sources and that's my fault. What I did is I tried to make them do the tests at the same altitude of the fighter aircraft which is 32 and a half a thousand ASL and they just struggled. They just couldn't do it and they, they burnt very inefficiently up there. So I'll have to go and redo them at some point but that's how they stand at the moment. So the A10C with that in mind is not going to be trying to do 32,000. I can guarantee it just simply won't work. It's not designed to be up there it's going to be i'm going to try 25,000 asl i think an a10c can probably do that for the fighters this works 32 and a half thousand asl just works uh for the attack aircraft which can't go that high uh, per se for crews we'll uh, put it down to 25 if that doesn't work we'll put it down to 20 but i think 25 should be okay right with that explained um let's see what we've got so far figures we've got so far the total amount of fuel we can carry with three bags is 23,091 pounds the test amount that we're doing is £12,004. It's not quite half, uh, but it's the best we can get with the, configure, the configuration options in DCS World. The fog is 1,020 as per. We're treating it as a light aircraft. Technically, in terms of weight, it's a medium, but I think in terms of fuel burn, you know, it's going to be more like a light aircraft. So fog, fuel on ground is going to be 1,020. Landing, uh, it's going to take five, uh, 533 pounds of gas to land so what we're going to do is take off uh, find out how much gas it takes to take off at the uh, specification at the ferry specification how far and then we're going to go on to cruise fuel burns and see how far uh, we can get this bird as in term of in terms of predictions honestly no idea i mean big uh, high bypass ratio of turbofans mean super efficiency right we all know that there's no argument against that it's probably going to be very efficient in terms of the engines however the airframe is very draggy so that could bring it back down you know we've got a lot of drag to deal with that there's got big straight wings do big straight wings give good efficiency well if we look at an airliner or something like that it's i mean they don't have straight wings do they they're big long wings but they're not straight so honestly i, I just don't know uh, in terms of speed because of how draggy it is and how straight the wings are probably we'll find it's going to be at the lower end of the speed that we are going to find the maximum uh, optimal but we'll just have to see and of course it's not going to be able to go very fast we probably won't have it up here at 275 300 we probably won't even manage 250 up at 25k we'll just see how it goes i think okay so the next thing is to get into dcs and um, get testing okay we've got our first test here we've got the guy uh, taking off he's going to be at full poundage 23,091 pounds three bags on for the drag uh, fuel burn is going to be turned on and that's it let's go into the cockpit and have a look okay we've got a good fuel gauge down here 23,100 so i'm just gonna don't need to write that down we already know that right so that's it double check we've got our bags on have everything's full gonna be nice and big and heavy okay oscar mike uh remember how to uh, do this thing the flaps up or down i think they're down at the moment i can't remember how to tell well, there they are, look. Perhaps a takeoff. Speedo is... Where's the speedo? There it is on the bottom left of the hard. In terms of how we're going to fly this uh, climb to cruise profile, to be honest, I don't think it's that important. Whatever's comfortable. If I go too low on the profile, if I go too high on the profile, it tends to average itself out, I found. It's just not that important for the sake of a few tens of pounds, you know. Are we airborne? I think we're airborne. Let's go gear up. Let's go flaps up. Okay. Flaps us done. 
see how she accelerates, so what kind of pitch we can achieve. Gonna go pretty much full throttle. I think a real A10 would probably go full throttle on the climb to cruise, so I don't think it's gonna burn a massive amount of gas. What I'll probably do now is shut up and just fast forward it until we get to our cruise altitude of 25k. You know what? Oh, I'm giving up. It just can't get to 25,000 feet on full gas. It's just too heavy. It's a real struggle to get up here. I think we're going to change from 25,000 feet to 20,000 feet for the attack planes. What's my alpha? I'm a 13 degrees alpha. Pretty much stalling out of the sky. Just about hitting 25, but I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to be able to maintain it fairly, I don't think. So to make it a bit more comfortable for the attack planes with a heavy weight, we'll stick to 20,000 feet. I think it's going to be better overall, so I'm going to start again. Right, never mind. Have and learn. Let's off we go. Okay, we're there now. I'm just amazed how badly this thing climbs. I don't know, I guess it's just a power to weight thing, I suppose. Uh, right, let's see, Whoa, what have we got? We've got 20, uh, what the hell does that say? 21,950, right? That's 21,950, let me write that down. And in terms of actual distance that we've traveled, Travelled uh, 51 nautical miles. We're going to have to convert that into uh, miles and put that on the chart. Okay, that's done. Now let's go and get the burn rate, the cruise burn rate. So, okay, we've got our cruise guy. It's at 20,000 feet now because we've decided that's just going to be best for the attack planes, we think. Probably be better for the Vigan and the AV8B as well. Uh, fuel burn needs to be turned off because that's how we're going to uh, do this. I'm going to save that. And off we go. Yeah, let's just get ourselves stabilised. And what do we want? Uh, where is it? Here it is. Stabilise it there. Ping. Okay. Simple as that. Check we've got our bags. Bags are good. Check autopilot's working. It is. Right. So let's get our speeds. We're not using calibrated speed. We're using IAS. KIAS. It's down at the bottom there. So let's come off the gas now. And try and get this stuff sorted. So we'll do 200 first, because why not? No, it seems to want to go fast. Well, let's let it go fast then. Let's go up to 225. Okay, we seem to have it pretty static there at 225. Check the fuel burn rates. And let's just move over there. Move down here. Okay. Fuel, uh, what is that? Pounds per hour times 100. I've got 15... So that's 1500, that's 1600, 1700, 1900. So that's 1590, 1590 pounds per hour per engine. Let me go and write that down. Okay, let's try 250 knots if we can get up there. I think the uh, autopilot has cancelled itself for some reason. It has, what the hell? Oh, hang on. Come on, autopilot, work. We got it. We've got it, and we've got the speed as well, right. That was a struggle. 252, you know what? Between friends, I think that's close enough. Oh, I've got to figure out what this is now. So I'll describe that as 1, 9, 
90 pounds per hour per engine 1990 pounds per hour per engine these are really high burn rates these are like f15 burn rates what the hell I had no idea it could burn this much gas. Okay, one thing's for sure, we are not going to be able to go any faster than that. I'm fully maxed out. Uh, so let's bring down... In fact, let's just see if we can get any faster. Oh, I can't get any faster. The engines just won't spool any higher. Right, let's go down to 200s next. Okay, she seems to be stable there at 200 knot IAS. Fuel burn is... What's that going to be? So it's 1100... 1200, 1300, so that's 1280 pounds per hour per engine. Okay, let's go down to 175. Oh, it's starting to get efficient now, finally. Uh, that is 1000, so that's 1000. Uh, that's 1100, so that is 11, uh, sorry, that's 1070 pounds per hour per engine. Right, let's see if we can get down to 150, just out of interest. It may start stalling and go weird but we'll try it okay pretty stable there at 150 knots tiny bit more power uh we're up at 11 degrees alpha right now it's fairly high alpha for a cruise well very high alpha for a cruise okay and we get a burn rate of just over 1000 about it's about 10 10 pounds per ma 10 10 pounds per hour per engine 10 10 stand by Okay, that's all the data we need. Next, let's go jump uh, back to our data table and get the data sorted. Okay, it's a super simple conversion by the way we've done it. So we've done 175k IAS, it's 337 miles per hour. Where's our aeroplane? Here it is. So we're just going to do uh, 2,100, 2,140 pounds per hour fuel burn divided by 3... Three seven miles per hour gives us 6.350 pounds per mile. So 6.350, 6.350. And you can already see how good that is compared to everything else. Uh, even, you know, even the Mirage, which is the Mirage, is ridiculously good in this game. And wow, the Mirage actually might beat the A10. Mm, I'm dubious at how about how good this Mirage is in DCS. Keeps surprising me. Um, all right, next uh, we've got 2,560. So it seems like I was right. It's going to get more and more efficient the faster it goes, uh, unlike the other birds, uh, for obvious reasons. Divided by 383 gives 6.684 6.684 pounds per mile. And it's probably just going to keep getting worse. Uh, bugger it. Let me just gonna double check that first one again. 2140 divided by 337. Mm hmm. Next, we've got uh, 3180, so it starts to really burn fuel now. Um, divided by 428 equals, yeah, 7430. Uh, 7 and we've got 3980 divided by 472 miles per hour. Uh, 8.432, 8.432. And we've also got, I haven't got it fitted on the chart here, but we've got this one here, 2020 at 150 knots. Why does that keep loading up? So 2020 divided by, oh, I've got to go convert that into a miles per hour standby. Okay, so it's going to do that. So uh, 337 divided by 175 equals times uh, 150 equals memory store. Cancel two two uh, two zero two six. Really, press the buttons. Two uh, divided by memory read equals six point nine nine. So this one is uh, actually worse. So like like a lot of these planes, you get too slow. The alpha gets too high. You actually become less efficient. So the most efficient for the A ten is unlike the other ones. You can see maximum efficiency here in the green. Uh, is that going to be pion, right away down here 175 pretty much what all of us would have guessed i imagine based on just the profile of the plane it's a big kind of glider shape at the end of the day i should note that these ones need redoing redo at 20k just in case people find it, look, look, think those uh, figures look a bit strange i've got to put the maximum figure in here which is 6.35 pounds per mile burn and that gives us our cruise miles. Wow, 33,212. Which is going to give us our total. Oh, pew. 
That is a total variability from base to base with 1074 or 1020 fog of uh, 3,270 miles. So it'll be interesting to see how that um, varies with the real life data to see what, uh, what what the real one can do. But that's um, compared to anything else here, that's amazing. Again, we'll redo the Harrier and the AGS uh, at some point. And what I'm going to start doing right here is uh, 20k, 32.5k, just so we know what was done at what altitude. And the other thing is we need to just go and complete the graph quickly. So let's get that done. Right, so this is just down to D64 now, isn't it? Pion. Pion. And we've got there, we've got the A10. So you can see, again, it just shows how stupidly good the Mirage 2000 is. I'm still not convinced that Mirage 2000 is that good. I'm always uh, starting to be corrected, and I usually am wrong. But just look how good it is compared to anything. It drives me insane. Anyway, there you go, guys. Um... That's it. If you want to go very far, very far, like across the Atlantic nearly, in an aeroplane, grab an A10C and go and do that shit. Hope that's useful. See you later.